Cole never got the opportunity to be a pilot during World War II. He wound up becoming in the infantry, the Battle of the Bulge. Coming out of World War II, he wound up getting himself into the Roosevelt Field School of Aviation to get a mechanics license. And in one of the hangars there, Hangar 68, there were these airplanes, original World War I airplanes, and he loved to go and steal away during breaks in classes and go sit in them. And those airplanes wound up becoming just a fascination with him. And he asked the dean, what's going to happen to them? They're all sitting here dusty. He said, nothing. They're staying right there. We're not doing anything with them. So Cole graduated, got his mechanics license, all went well. And then he found out that the Roosevelt Field School of Aviation was going to close, and it was going to become a shopping center. And he wrote to Dean Guthrie, asked him what was happening to those airplanes at Hangar 68. He said, you know what? They're available for sale. And he bid $1,500 on a buck private salary for those particular airplanes, thinking he'd get maybe one sop with snipe, or maybe the Avro 504, the, you know, one of these SPAD 13. And he waited, and he waited, and he waited, and he waited, and he got a letter in the mail, and it said, congratulations, Mr. Palin, you're the proud owner of six World War I airplanes. You have 30 days to get them off the field here. And so he did. And it was basically about mm, 20 trips every which way but loose every one of them had a story with themselves but he got all the airplanes up to his family's farm and where they raised it and where they lived until he could find this field which was not anything like it and i'll tell you more about that in a few but we want to get our airplanes in the air here because everybody's age is to fly for our first opening act here going to give a beautiful airplane opportunity to take off and i'm going to tell you this is a special airplane here folks this is actually cole palin's fleet that he had here when he first got this farm. Listen to the Fleet 16B. That's the guy who was here in 1959 with Cole Palin at the controls. Today, Alex Davidson. Matt Hewer taking over. Take off your hat. Rachel Walker will sing for you our national anthem. And what's going to happen here is Alex James is going to pull away. And Matt Hewer is going to drop something out of the airplane. We love dropping things out of airplanes. But it's a common item you might have used today. You can see it. It might be hard today. It's your popular brand at the time. How many times can he hit that ribbon and cut it before it hits the ground? Cut number one, taking it right off the top. Great Lakes, a great, great airplane. Very aerobratic. Built them in about 1929. Ran until 1933. Depression caught up with the company. Matt Hewer lined it up for cut number two. They were brought back in the 70s. This is a 1970 example of that airplane. So revered, they ran for a while and then went out of business and came back again just recently. Cut number three off the top. Wind is really coming out of the north, so you have to kind of plan your drop for things like this. It's kind of hard to find the ribbon the first time you throw it out, but it's a lot of fun. I used to load up my plane to just decorate the countryside. Cut number four, he lined it up for it. Ah, uh, perfect. On a humid day, too, what does toilet paper do? It absorbs moisture, and here we get. So it starts to sink and get heavier, so you have to adjust your rate of descent. Cut number five coming up. Bam, right there. And he might get cut number six. Nope, I don't think he's going to go for it. So he'll give us a nice photo flyby. Ladies and gentlemen, Matt, you are in the Great Lakes Sport Trainer coming from the south. It's very hard to drop two and get them to fall exactly right. 
the late Bill King, who flew here for many years with do this as well. Now you see that one's kind of crumpling up, so you might get one cut there. That's one, that's two. He got three cuts to his credit. He may get one more, it's sinking pretty good. We're so pleased to have the fleet back here again at Old Ryan Bay. There's another cut. And he may go for one more. We have another fleet here, but this example is the real deal from Cole Palin. It was one of the first three airplanes to land on this field back in the day. And another cut to his credit. Taking it right to the middle. He'll line up to give us a flyby. Somebody asked me, why don't you cut it with the propeller? It's right out there. Well, the reason you don't want to cut it with the propeller is it could ingest into the intake, and then the airplane has a very embarrassing silencing sound. We always say the propeller is there to keep the pilot cool. You want to see him sweat, make it stop. <laughs> line it up for a photo flyby from the South. Alex Jameson in the fleet, 16B. airplanes back on the ground and we're going to get to some pre-World War I activities here. This is going to be a lot of fun too. Just a reminder too, we still have some tickets available for tonight's fundraiser dinner. If you have some plans this evening, you can, later you can have uh, dinner with us tonight. $30 a ticket in the gift shop here on the field and the foundation building will be open tonight and you can have a great meal, help out the air room at the same time and sit amongst some incredible aviation history. Fleet 60B coming in to land at Old Rhinebeck as it did 60 years ago. Listen to the wind of the wires. Alex Jameson in the Fleet 60B touching down so gracefully. Side slipping in the Great Lakes Sport Trainer. Wheeling it on. Matt Hewer, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see both these airplanes flying again during the show, so you have some great opportunities to see their performance characteristics. Joe will do a little formation taxi back for you. see the design, see the construction. Notice the fleet has a one-piece wing, very efficient, very light. But this was air, uh, the Cole Palin's airplane that was really his station wagon of the sky. He would take parts of one of the old World War I planes to another airport to have some work done on it. And it was not uncommon to see him flying this airplane all over the Dutchess County area of Hudson Valley. Alex Jamison in the fleet, Matt Hewer in his beautiful Great Lakes Ford trainer. Love the logo that you see on the nose, it's really nice. 